let's move on. When I will choose a trifocal IOL for my patient, Dr. Shahid. Uh, at the outset, uh, I do acknowledge that uh, our hospital does receive research grant support from Alcon Laboratories. Uh, I think all patients, irrespective, if, if they were given an option, they would ideally not want to wear glasses uh, uh, at all for anything, uh, if there was a, an ideal lens with no compromise. So everyone wants far, distance, intermediate, everything uh, in today's time. Uh, and therefore, like Dr. Abhijit uh, correctly mentioned, we need to understand the patient and the eye both together. So first, the eye needs to be examined thoroughly about ocular comorbidities and the suitability from the optical profile point of view. But that's not alone enough. Uh, the more important aspect is also to understand the person sitting on the other side of the slit lamp and the relatives that, you, that have come with them. The most important differentiating factor that I find in choosing a, a particular IOL over the other is the activities that the patient is likely to do and his profession and his active lifestyle uh, or his profession that he's pursuing and is going to continue to pursue in the next decade or so. Uh, there are several uh, questionnaires that have been come that have come up. Uh, this particular one from Alcon also is a fairly simple one. And, and the priority that I'm looking at as far as asking the patient is, is he a regular night driver on highways? Uh, for example, there are several factory owners in uh, our part of the world who have their factory industrial zone is about 30 to 50 kilometers away from the city. So they drive daily, come back in the evenings on their own drive on city or rural roads, uh, uh, like Dr. Abhijit was mentioning. Uh, and how much is their other activity used in terms of their other uh, uh, hobbies or their work profile in terms of distance intermediate and near? So this is one very important criteria, a night driving and the amount of night driving that they are likely to do in the coming few years uh, when we want to decide what particular IOL uh, is likely to be working. So this was a uh, very fit, active 80-year-old lady. Uh, recently, with age, has become slightly forgetful of late and she's never got uh, used to wearing bifocal or progressive all her life. So she has separate glasses for distance and reading. And she has to keep asking and keep finding where she left her uh, one glass pair somewhere, one glass pair somewhere. Now she has bilateral cataracts and her ocular profile was very healthy with a normal OCT, no corneal degeneration or anything like that. Uh, so uh, the activities, mainly indoor lifestyle, naturally not going to drive, uh, likes to read. Uh, and would love to not have to keep looking for, for different pairs of glasses, taking uh, off and wearing one over the other. So we suggested a bilateral pan optics and uh, we uh, explained to her that not only because of the pan optics, you will need extra light, but also because of the aging retina, you are likely to require more light when you read. So we counseled her that when you read, try and go near the window or sit in the veranda in the morning daytime uh, where there's more bright sunlight. And if you are indoors, even if it's daytime, switch on the room lights uh, and you'll be more comfortable in reading compared to in dim light conditions. And post-operatively, she's very happy. She doesn't need to remember where she leaves her glasses anymore and is able to be, be more independent in her house on her own. So the take-home message from this case that age cannot be a bar for panoptics or trifocal IOL. In fact, it is these senior citizens whose life is likely to be improved more because quite often they stay alone at their home, a husband and wife, children staying abroad, so on and so forth with multiple health issues, so on and so forth. So if the eye's ocular profile is suitable, age is something that you must not consider in suggesting a trifocal eye. This is a very interesting case. An ophthalmologist very active, uh, very actively operating as well, and is likely to continue to operate at least for another decade. Uh, he's been using progressive glasses. He was a latent hypermetrope with press pyopia. So using progressives after 40 years of age. Uh, and he has fairly decent amount of multifocal IOLs in his practice. And he has had good experience with multifocal IOLs, particularly amongst his close relatives. So he came to us for cataract surgery and he was forthright that he was keen on considering uh, a, a trifocal IOL for himself. Now forget that he's your colleague, your friend, uh, look at it from a patient point of view. So his main work is through the microscope and slit lamp. And remember, when you see through a microscope, it's your distance vision that is going to work and not your near vision. So he's going to use his distance vision most of the time. He drives at city in, in the city from home to hospital and hospital to home, hardly has any uh, outdoor traveling or driving at night. 
uh, and he's keen on multifocal IELTS due to his happy past experience. His ocular profile was suitable for a bilateral panoptic story. Uh, we did have a fairly detailed discussion with him that you might see some halos when you drive at night or you look at bulbs in your in your own home uh, and use adequate light while, while reading and we may be able to achieve a good outcome. Now, if we look, when we looked at his biometry, there was hardly a difference of 0.34 between the actual K1 and K2. Uh, and therefore, generally, you would never think of a toric IOL with such a low difference in the K1 and K2. However, what we have learned over the years is that your surgically induced astigmatism and posterior corneal astigmatism also plays a significant role. And when we put his data in the Barrett's toric calculator, it turns out he requires a T2. So therefore, uh, uh, we find that to calculate each I uh, or each data in the Barrett's toric calculator to actually find out whether the patient requires toric or not, and just don't go by the difference in the K1, K2 values. So we went ahead with binocular panoptic toric uh, for this ophthalmologist. Uh, and uh, at one month, he's extremely happy. He's called several times to say that he's able to operate, examine, drive, read without any difficulty. And he's uh, very keen that uh, I would recommend this to all ophthalmic surgeons uh, uh, with the outcome that he has had. He does say that, yes, uh, when I drive, uh, I do occasionally see halos, but they don't bother me. And I would, uh, if I had a choice again uh, for a surgery again, I would still go for this uh, uh, trifocal IOL uh, it, uh, in spite of the fact that I do see occasional halos when I drive at night. So uh, I think the biggest hesitation is for most of us is amongst our doctor colleagues and doctor patients when either they are as a patient or as we as surgeons are hesitant in suggesting something uh, where uh, until so far with the bifocal IELTS where we are not sure how the patient is going to end up uh, post-operatively. But keep in mind that the microscope work requires distance vision and not your near vision. So all surgeons, pathologists who are seeing through microscopes, etc., if they have good distance vision, they are going to be happy. And remember other surgical fields now, like say general surgery, laparoscopic surgeons, OBGY, so on and so forth, have usually good bright lights in their operating fields uh, or they are uh, operating seeing on the larger screens uh, in their through their laparoscopic cameras. So uh, usually uh, if, if you hit target, you are likely to satisfy many of uh, the doctor colleagues as well, whether surgical or non-surgical uh, with trifocal IOLs. Uh, but of course, forthright discussion preoperatively is mandatory and the patients must be motivated to accept occasional hellos from time to time. The third case, a uh, convent teacher, uh, in fact, uh, the Vaishali Virat school teacher during uh, uh, their school time, uh, now retired. Uh, and you can imagine a convent teacher, you have that uh, perception in her mind, very strict, very proper, no compromise. Uh, uh, and she loves to do sudo, sudoku, uh, uh, being a teacher, obviously intelligent games are her forte. Uh, she, her children stay abroad in two different continents. So traveling is, is part of her life. So she likes to travel and likes to, loves to do sudoku. So her primary activities are outdoor when traveling and near work, uh, which is uh, uh, paper and uh, pen. So we suggested bilateral cataract panoptics uh, for her, uh, keeping in mind her activity profile. And she's extremely happy post-operatively. And more importantly, the surgeon is more uh, happy that this uh, patient is happy now. This is a fourth case, uh, retired deputy general uh, uh, police. Uh, I think the, he, he, he plays golf. And I think the only two people in India who play golf are either bureaucrats uh, or corporate uh, honchos and these uh, bureaucrat uh, police people because they all work in tandem together. Rest, we don't get such profiles in India. It's only in America that you get golf players. So this is a bilateral cataract, regular golf player. Uh, and he was very clear that I'm not going to be seen wearing glasses when I keep going to these golf uh, meetings and we keep uh, socializing over the weekend. He had regular astigmatism in both eyes and therefore uh, keeping in mind that he's likely to require in golfing a little bit of intermediate vision when we actually look at the ball to try and hit with the stick and far away to see where the ball is going. Uh, we uh, counseled him for a bilateral panoptic story and post-operatively he is uh, he's, he's very happy in his socializing life as well as uh, while playing golf tournaments at the local level. 
Uh, the fifth case, uh, uh, and we all will have such patients uh, uh, in our practice, a blurred vision, 35-year-old young person, uh, and complain mainly of glare. He's a myope, a moderate myope, and uh, as all of us have known, moderate myopes are probably the most difficult to uh, uh, please, no matter what IOL, what target you choose. Uh, and being a software engineer, he spends his uh, entire work profile uh, on the computer. And he has bilateral subcapsular cataract. Uh, his, his pay package is probably more than most of us, but he loves to drive bike just for other reasons and not because he, can, he can't afford a car. Uh, his uh, uh, friends and certain of his uh, family members being from the medical profession had warned him that no multifocal aisles, no multifocal aisles, don't get multifocal aisles and several times. And his main concern was get rid of this glare. What he did forget was that he's pre-press biopic. He's 35 years of age. He's never experienced press biopia and he's minus 1.5. So he naturally anyway has very good near vision without glasses. And most myopes feel that that's their birthright to have good near vision unaided without glasses. So keeping that in mind, uh, we considered the way your, your concern is glare and distance and intermediate vision is your priority. So the first time we did uh, uh, about seven years back uh, with the Restore 2.5 uh, uh, IOL, uh, uh, keeping in mind all his activity profile. Uh, Post-operatively, he's happy with the distance and computer vision, but he was not really happy with the reading ability. He thought he would, he would see much better for near up close to see his phone and other activities, which he's now struggling to do with the operated eye. And he wishes if his near vision could have been better. And he was lost to follow up for three years. So we obviously thought he's now gone and must have got operated somewhere else uh, for the other eye. He comes back again after three years. Uh, and we discussed with him the option of considering now that we had pan optics in our armament radium of blending the multifocal aisles, which we used to do quite often earlier on with low add in one eye and plus three in the other eye. Uh, and it was a bit of a compromise. So we discussed with him that this is an option for you now to consider, to consider a trifocal in the other eye. Uh, and that will give you a good range of vision binocularly for most uh, of your activities. Uh, but we forewarned him that if you try to compare the vision in both eyes, you'll always find a difference and be prepared to use selective glasses uh, for reading. Uh, Post-operatively, at two months, his binocular visual performance is very good. He does accept uh, ad for reading and he uses this ad only when he reads books at nighttime in his bed uh, with dim lights. Apart from that, for most of his routine activities, He's glasses independent and he uh, doesn't find uh, much of a difficulty uh, in driving his motorbike as well. So no gross halos or glare that he has uh, is, is sort of noted. So pan optics can be considered in the second eye of patients whom, whom we have already done an need of in one eye uh, previously uh, when this was not available and who are not very happy with their post-operative outcome, particularly for near vision. So it can be considered as an IOL for mix and match in a previously operated eye. And this is a case of a 46-year-old gynecologist, uh, blurred vision and difficulty in focusing in surgical fields, mainly during her gynec surgery is not the obstetric practice. Uh, she's never used press biopic glasses so far, although she has an ad and somehow she manages to get away binocularly by taking things far away, increasing the font, so on and so forth. Uh, and she has a unilateral right eye cataract uh, with hardly any changes of uh, cataract in the left eye. Uh, so we are only thinking of operating one eye at this point of time. She would like that she would not have to wear glasses, doesn't like to be seen uh, around everywhere uh, wearing reading glasses or uh, uh, while operating. Uh, and she hardly drives. Her home and hospital is very close by. Uh, so we had a discussion with her, the option of her trifocal IOL. We explained that, you know, uh, uh, so far uh, we, we were generally hesitant in uh, uh, considering unilateral trifocal IOLs in a unilateral cataract. And we explained that if you don't get used to the vision in both eyes, we may have to consider early lens removal in the other eye, even if there is not much of a cataract which requires surgery. So she agreed and we, uh, she underwent uh, flax with uh, 23 diopter pan optics. And post-operatively, she has excellent distance, intermediate and near vision, is able to do all her activities, including her surgeries, very comfortably without glasses 
and now we have more than 3 years follow up for her uh, no cataract in the other eye and she is very comfortable with her binocular vision in both eyes uh, so not for all unilateral cataracts but can be considered in select cases of unilateral cataracts after pre good pre operative discussion uh, with the patient as well we did our own uh, uh, we were part of this multi center india trial of pan optics uh, 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 bilateral patients atis uh, where we studied and we found uh, the in the real world in our population that the functional continuous range of vision uh, for distance to near is somewhere starting from about 40 cm going up to 80 up to 100 cm and there was a very high level of spectacle independence more than 90% and, and very high patient sat, sat, satisfaction and all of these patients had paid for their iols uh, uh, so likely to be uh, you know good outcomes uh, so the strength of the trifocal iols are that it definitely gives or delivers the full range of vision that we've all been looking for and all been longing for Uh, and definitely more much greater spectacle independence than the previous generation iols and the current uh, extended depth of focus iols the trade offs of course there will be trade offs uh, like we have discussed in the discussions as well uh, there are halos and uh, therefore if you look at a light which is far away you a focus light you will see circles around that when the light starts coming closer towards you you will start noticing them less and with binocular summation they will reduce with time but if somebody looks to find the halos they will find them so never say that after 3 months 6 months you won't see any halos just tell them that you will notice them much less than what you see them initially and in mesopic conditions they have a lower contrast sensitivity although not as a higher drop as with the bifocal iols uh, and therefore always forewarn them that you may need uh, extra light for reading and the third thing that we have found is that the reading distance is about 40 cm so particularly for myops if you are operating those who are used to reading quite close to their eye just tell them in advance that your reading distance is going to recede a little bit compared to what you are used to for so many years so having such good experience across all ranges would you choose trifocals for everyone well uh, definitely it would be the first choice for any patient walking in uh, with a good or suitable ocular profile Uh, the only few patients that we would really want to be careful are are regular night drivers uh, that is those who have to drive on highways or like dr bijit mentioned on rural roads where there are no street lights uh, likely to be no dividers as well so direct lights are likely to be coming and of course there are uh, fastidious personalities whom on the first visit of the clinic you know this patient is going to eat up your chair time post operatively even if he undergoes a monofocal iol Uh, certain personalities are just like that so certain extremely fastidious personalities and night drivers are someone uh, that you need to be careful about choosing this iol uh, and uh, pick therefore picking the right patients is important uh, but i think uh, uh, with pan optics coming in with uh, uh, the very pleasant post operative experience of very few dysphotopsias post operatively uh, the chair time has drastically reduced in counseling for panoptics compared to the previous generation bifocal iols so thank you very much for the patient listening thank you shay